Hi, everybody, cool. and welcome to the Pranic World Festival 2021. I'm Woo Naida. Woo <laughs> I'm Naida, and I'm very happy and honored to be here today with Tal. Tal from Israel. And hi, Tal. Hello, Naida. Hey, Hello. everyone. So good to see you. Thank I you actually too. tried to reach out to you a couple of years ago, but I was very busy in Bali and you were very busy sky, uh, ski. Yeah, you were ski somewhere. It was before <laughs> the apocalypse, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Together again. And yeah, it makes me very happy because uh, we have a unique opportunity to listen to your journey and also maybe to have some nugget of wisdom on how to keep going with this lifestyle also in a day-to-day -day life because integration is most of the time the most challenging part of the journey and um, because we are uh, translating in a simu a simultaneously in other three languages by our beautiful translators that are here just in service like everybody here at the festival actually we are all here volunteering and making it happen because it's important now to share the, this paradigm uh -huh. um, so to help the translator we need to speak slow and eventually leave moments of silence between sentences if i see that you speed up i will show you on the screen my little friend and your new little friend, a unicorn, <laughs> and it just means I love you, please slow down. <laughs> and yeah, so now I pass you the mic and we are here for you. And I will be back after your sharing for a question and answer from our audience. We have audience here on the site and audience on Zoom. We are about 70 people today. And then there will be most probably in a few days, the, the YouTube, uh, uh, rec um, the conference recorded and going into YouTube. Cool. Yeah. And we are as well live. Uh, we're talking only on the Zoom or we're as well people seeing us in the festival itself? How yes, is it going yes. On? people is live at the festival. I'm actually not at the festival in this moment, just because as I was explaining in the morning, the festival happens in Kokore, right. which which is in the green heart of Italy. It's such a little corner of paradise. I've been and there, it's Eden, it's heaven. Ah, yeah, you've been there, the yeah, yeah, that's true. So nearby we have waterfalls, we have river, we have the sea. And since I just flew back from Bali, I really wanted to give to my physical body <laughs> a, a new resetting to the sea. So I'm here and not at the festival, but yeah, there are people there. And I see if after someone can show to you also. Yeah, if I venue. can get people yeah. in the festival, that would be beautiful. Yeah, I will ask after to do it for you. Okay, so I will be back after your uh, sharing with question and answer. Cool. So yay, hello everybody. I am so excited for this day and so excited to bring this sharing to you. Um, since, you know, I've heard on Pranic Living so many years ago, but or already more than a decade ago, I started my journey. And I believe many of you in here have heard on different journeys, like the 21 day journey, the 14 day process, 10 day, 11 day, nine, eight, seven, six, four, five. Three. <laughs> so here, yeah, right, we have, ding, 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 we have all of them. And all of them are beautiful processes life-changing processes the thing is that i felt that in these processes i had a missing link actually i had two missing links into these processes and this is what made me come up and create in this last decade what i called the full pranic process and this really brings the full picture it's beyond just those days we do 21 14 17 19 8 all of those are amazing, but we need more than that for me in order to really live a sustainable and a happy long-term pranic living. And we're gonna talk about that more a bit later. 
But uh, what I want right now is actually to start asking you something. If you guys can even write in the chat, Naira, they can write in the chat things or? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. they can write in the chat. Great. And actually I, I take advantage because the Spanish translation is overlapping on your voice. So if we can fix this. Uh, how can we do this? Can I help it uh, somehow? No, 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 the, the, te the technician are doing it. Is ah, it? okay. So meanwhile, yeah. it's good that I'll ask the question. So you say it's synchronized anyway. <laughs> Great. Okay. So um, you you want the audience to ask question? Uh, no, no, not the last question. I want to ask something, and I want okay. them to answer in the chat. And what I want to ask you guys, if you are right now with us in the live Zoom call, or if you are in the festival itself, hi, I want to be there with you next year. Hopefully, it can actually happen. It was too hard to fly out of Israel right now with all the logistics and COVID things and isolation and stuff. So uh, if you're there, if you're in the Zoom or if you would sit in the YouTube after that, I want you, I want you guys to actually check in something within yourself. And this is something that is really meaningful for our journey, for our pranic journey, as well for our life journey. But let's focus for our pranic journey right now. And this is what is your why? And this is what I want us to take a moment of silence with ourselves. It might be that you're already doing it. It, already, it might be that you're already in the pranic journey. Maybe you're Bertharian level three, level four, maybe you're doing it for many years. It might be that you still haven't started the journey itself as, as an initiation. Never, nevertheless, wherever you are, I want you to take a moment and ask yourself, what is your why? What is your like, maybe three main whys, two, three main whys of why are you so appealed to this journey? Why you wanna do it? So let's take a moment of silence within ourselves, check in for a moment. And if you want, you can write some answers in the chat. So I see it as well. Yeah, again, I, I want to invite everybody to write in the chat. I can see that some answers are coming. So yeah, feel free and then I will read them. Beautiful. And now when it comes up to you, I want you even to deepen more and ask yourself, why is this meaningful for you? I seen in here we have someone is writing embodiment of soul, source. And light, I see answers like oneness with God, yay, <laughs> to serve the spiritual evolution, aho, surrendering to God, experiencing joy, energy, peace, and confidence, freedom. Amazing, guys. Keep on writing those answers. And wow, it's coming, it's coming, it's beautiful. I want you right now to take a moment with yourself and ask yourself, why is this meaningful for you? Why is freedom meaningful for you? Why is for health, I see in, in here you wrote, is meaningful for you? Why is serving the spiritual evolution is meaningful for you? I want you to get your deep whys. Let's take another moment with ourselves to just contemplate at that. I'm enjoying your answers here. <laughs> <laughs> I seen somebody wrote in here beautiful thanks for the question the why is bringing me alignment <laughs> alignment so yeah this is this is what it meant to do because this journey guys and I, I see you keep on writing the answers please keep on writing them we could not read all of them but it's beautiful it's beautiful to see you participating and why am I asking why am I actually asking you this why because I know what it takes to deepen in this journey. And if we don't have a strong why, know your reasons, know your vision, know, know what's happening in here. If we don't have a strong why, when the big waves are coming and when the challenges are coming, it might be that we won't stay. We won't stay through the challenges. But if we know our reasons, if we know our why, if we know our deep why, and if we know our vision to this life, bring those challenges on. Bring me those things and I'll take them as, it, as they come. And I take them with love. It wouldn't even be a fight. It would be an evolutional growth. 
and leap. So this is what I really want you to hold in your heart and in your vision in the years that are coming to you in the pranic journey. And it might be that the whys would evolve as well, but keeping this vision within yourself would take you through the, through the challenging times and as well would help you flourish in those times that everything is just thriving for you. Yeah, I see that you're still keeping on writing. You guys are amazing. Thank you for participating like this. And I see some questions as well. We'll take as well questions a bit later. But meanwhile, if it's okay for you, we'll deepen a bit more. So I seen as well somebody wrote in here in Spanish. If you can write in English that I could just understand. <laughs> I still don't know Spanish well enough. Hopefully in the future. Uh, so, don't, don't, wor don't worry, Tal. I'm here also to translate from Spanish, Italian, and French. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Naida. Cool, guys. So right now, you can we can stop writing in the chat. I see already a lot of answers in here, but let's let go in, over the chat. And right now, let's continue in our journey in here in the short time that we have. So I wanna share with you some things of how I see the pranic journey of more than a decade, having the privilege of starting my journey more than a, de a decade ago. What I see in here is actually a vision of a new humanity, of a new planet. And I believe that some of you guys, you feel it as well. You know how maybe many, many years ago, the vegetarian person was like, are you crazy? You, you lettuce eater, they were calling us, you know, grass eater, stuff like that. And then you would find a vegetarian in many places in the world. And then the vegan was like, no, no, okay, a vegetarian is okay, but being vegan is like, you're crazy guys. And then veganism is just all over, all over. And today they're almost in every table, you would find a vegetarian or a vegan or both. And sometimes in some tables, there would even be the majority that sits around the table. <laughs> so in my vision, what I see that all of us in here, the teachers for the pranic living, the people that live this life as well, we are bringing a new paradigm. Like people that were vegetarian and vegan and they were like crazy, the crazy ones. And right now it's the paradigm that is so like, yeah, of course they're vegetarian people, they're vegan people, it's even healthy, it, sound, it makes sense, it helps the planet, etc. And I have a vision that this is what would happen slowly, slowly with pranic living. And that with the years, it would just be another thing that makes sense to so many people. And that they feel, of course, this is a way to live. I wouldn't say everybody need to do it because you need to have your whys and you need to have your calling as well. That this is the biggest why for me. Sometimes, Sometimes the, one of the biggest whys would be a why that we do not even consciously understand. And that would be a calling of our soul. It's like someone loves, let's say, hockey and someone loves dancing. Someone loves men and someone loves women and it doesn't matter if she's a woman or he's a man. We can love this, the same sex or other sex. We don't know sometimes why our, our preferences go the way they go. But we do know what is our heart call, what is our heart calling. And if you guys have this heart calling towards the pranic living, that might be the biggest why. And what I see in this vision of new humanity, of new world, I see us with so much more connection and connectivity to nature, to the animals, to Mother Earth, to other people around us, to ourselves, and to creation. And I feel that this is the paradigm of a new man, a new woman that we want to bring to this planet. And the pranic living really progress us there. They say about five dimensional creatures, 
I believe some of you guys heard on 3D, 4D, 5D, the different dimensions. So there is a beautiful saying that uh, explains the way of how five dimensional creatures are acting within themselves. And they're conscious enough to not think one bad thought on another or on themselves because they know how much they create the reality. So they are focusing to think good, to project good, and to create good externally and internally. And this is where I feel we go as the paradigm, as the vision of new humanity and new planet. And I'm giving thanks for this pranic journey that helped us really progress there. So what in my perception happens in, in a pranic journey is something very sweet and unique. Because some of you have probably heard these questions as teachers or as people that walk the path or as people that want to walk the path, but other people ask you those questions. Maybe even you ask those questions because they are very legit questions. And this is, but wait a minute, our body needs the different foundations. It needs the vitamins, the minerals, the carbs, the different things, fat, different things the body needs. How can you bring it if not through food? And people are right. We do need those foundations. But those foundations are like fuel to this vehicle, to this beautiful temple that holds our soul. And the thing is that we were educated all of our lives that the way to bring this fuel into this vehicle is through food. What we were less educated, that it is not the only way. And I'm not even talking right now about interests. I'm not talking about the corporation stock. <laughs> I'm not bringing all of this up because they wouldn't like a lot of pranic people in here. <laughs> Imagine so much less consumption, <laughs> so much less people buying stuff and unnecessary food that a lot of it they throw eventually. So it's not fueling the system. But I'm putting that aside. Let's not say interest of holding the information. Let's only talk about innocence. Innocence and lack of knowledge. Because if we're educated, this is the only way to fuel this vehicle. We think that if we not bring this specific fuel, this vehicle could not function. And once we open up to the depth of the understanding that like in a car that were regular only for gasoline to put in the car, and this is the fuel for the car, one day you say, hey, I actually want to have a hybrid car. I want to have a car that can run on different fuel. It can be electricity, it can be gas, it can be maybe banana fuel <laughs> or even water. Guys, in Israel, there's people that are working on fueling cars through water. Doesn't matter which one, but an alternative fuel for this vehicle that brings all of what this fuel is bringing, but not only through one source. And this is what happens in pranic journeys, in pranic initiations. We are opening our vehicle to the hybrid engine. And we don't throw necessarily the food engine aside. We don't say that it's bad. We don't judge it. 
we give thanks to it. And when we can, when we can enjoy from it, but we don't need to enjoy every day, several times a day. <laughs> we can eat once or twice a week or once or twice a month. Or some people do not even eat anymore and some do not eat or drink anymore at all. And we are allowed this engine to open up more and more. The engine that runs on pranic fuel, on life energy. And then all of what our body needs as foundations is given from another source of fuel. So this is the way of how I see the pranic journeys. And right now I wanna deepen with you guys and talk about what I started with. And I said, what are those missing links in the journey? So for me, what I've understood that I, let's say more than a decade ago, have done the 21 day process in Brazil. It was 7th of February, 2011. And I remember that because this is like my second birthday I celebrate in my life. <laughs> and I believe to some of you guys that have done processes, pranic processes, you remember that date because I felt reborn in my life. And the 21 day process was amazing. My guides, I'm in love with them. I love the place, I love the process. I give thanks to every little thing. But with the time I understood of some things that were really challenging for me. And some of them almost devastating to my journey. And the way that I seen it, that once I started initiating people through this journey, I couldn't take them through the same journey. I had to add those missing links that I have wished that I had myself. So what are those missing links? Let's start from the one that is not missing. It's the middle one. It's called the initiation. The initiation itself, 21, 9, 7, 11, and initiation. But what, becomes bef what comes before the initiation is the preparation. The preparation, the right preparation for this journey with his depths one of the most deepest journeys of our lives. And what comes after the, after the initiation is the integration. And for me, the integration is the most important part. So let's talk about them a little bit. In the preparation, what I see, it's like, let's say a person goes to the gym and they wanna lift the weight of 200 kilos or 300 pounds, wherever you are, whatever, whatever weight measure you have. Um, but let's say 200 kilos, I'm from Israel. <laughs> so we use this and 200 kilos is a lot. But let's say he comes with all the enthusiasm, all the energy, all his strength, all of the mindset. And he's just like, okay, lifting it for five, four, three, two, one, boom, and it crashes on his back. Because that's a lot, going to the gym for the first time and lifting a 200 kilos weight. And this is in a way of how I see the process itself. I think the integration process, the initiation, sorry, the initiation process is even more than a 200 kilos weight. <laughs> And this is why I would recommend to prepare ourselves better. It's like taking those 30 kilos first, maybe then 42, 55, 70, 100, slowly, 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 build our muscles, build our body, build our mind, build our emotional system, build our spirit, build our entire self into this initiation of the 200 plus kilos of the pranic process. 
And I don't know, actually, time-wise, uh, Naida, you will tell me, if, if I'll have more time, I'll even say some things about the preparation itself. But right now, I'll just finish that. And if we'll have time, I'll say some things on the preparation itself. Yeah, we have time. You can keep going for other 10 minutes. Cool. Even more. Go for it. Cool. So, so first, I want to give you the full picture. Uh, and then if we'll have time, we'll at least dive to some of the preparation. Um, so this is the first part. And the second part would be an initiation. And a lot of us know that's why we talked the different days, 21, 11, 7, all of those. All of those are beautiful. And the pro probably the guides that makes those, the, that makes the processes themselves by, by how I knew them up until now are one of the most amazing, conscious, open-hearted beings walk this planet. So guides that make the processes themselves are amazing. A lot of them, and this is for me the missing link, are right now not actually offering any, any, a preparation or integration. And this is what I want you guys to try and explore for yourself, how to prepare yourself, come more prepared to a journey. You know, a doctor, when he goes to study medicine, he's maybe studying for seven years, plus, minus, depends the country, and then he has a stage. <laughs> and then he's like, he's just a beginning doctor. <laughs> so it's more or less like 10 years to become a doctor, Western doctor. And a lot of us as well, we appreciate it, but we're as well, sometimes in more natural and holistic medicine as well. So this is to be a Western doctor. Guys, if you want to be pranic, invest some time. <laughs> I don't tell you go and study for 10 years, but I'm not sure if 21, 18, 17, 15, 10, 7, et cetera, would really be enough. And honestly, a lot of times it's not. And then comes the third part. After we've done an initiation, whatever we've done with whoever we've done, comes the most important part which is the integration. The integration for me is the most challenging part that I see, I've seen within myself. If we thought the preparation, <laughs> you know, like over there it was 50 kilos, 100, 150, we came to 200. In the integration right now, we're already in 250, 300, 400, going to 1,000. <laughs> slowly, slowly with the challenges of the integration. And I know that some of you are there, you're nodding your head right now. <laughs> and you know what I talk. You know what I talk about. If it's internal challenges, if it's external challenges, if it's our mind, if it's other people, if it's because maybe we're more skinny or more weak as a period of time when our body catches up with what our soul have just chose. So different, different challenges of how to allow ourselves to slowly, slowly integrate into this lifestyle. And without those three parts, I see that the path is just so much more challenging. And by that, it makes me sad, but I see less people, I see people doing different initiations, but less people percentage wise are actually staying there. And for me, it's like a good story. A good story is supposed to have not just the middle part, not just the initiation, but a beginning, the middle, and the end. Preparation, the initiation, and the integration. So this is for me the full pranic process. And when I share it with the word, it's a process that takes a few months. Preparation, initiation, integration, it's a longer process. And I have the privilege right now to teach for almost a decade people from all over the world that understand that. I do not believe in magic buttons anymore in my life. I looked for these magic keys in different years. This one night that would change me. This one process that would open it all. This one therapy that would heal me. You know, it doesn't go like that. There are super magical moments. But there is a beautiful saying, uh, they say it about, let's say, a person that is really successful in his life. 
and they call it, it might be, you know, with influence, with money, with happiness, whatever. And some people call it like an overnight success. In one night, he became famous and so influential and he had this beautiful thing coming and they say like, how did you succeed in one night? How, how did you succeed to do this one night, uh, over, one overnight success? And he tells them, that's so funny. You haven't been in the 30 years before when I went bankrupt two times, when my wife divorced me, when I thought almost I have no point to living my life anymore. You were not there with me in all those 30 years. But all those 30 years prepared me, put the foundations to this overnight success. <laughs> so even if we think it's a magical moment, it is a magical moment that has roots. It's not a magic button necessarily. And I have the privilege of attracting those souls, the souls that don't look for the magic buttons, the souls that actually understand life as a process. Like when we seed, when we seed a mango tree in the earth, we don't expect the mango fruit the day after. <laughs> We're patient enough to see this path of the tree. And this is what I see as nature way. So allowing ourselves to dissolve, to immerse into nature way. And to give ourselves the time for the deep processes to occur. So, yay, guys. And right now it's, uh, it's 30 minutes. I, I think soon it's a uh, Q&A time as this is at least what I've been told before. Um, uh, yes, Tal, if you want to add something, feel free to do it. Otherwise, we can go for the Q&A. You cool. have more time if you want. Cool, okay. So, so I'll, I might give some things on preparation because, uh, because I feel, I don't know the percentage of people that would hear this talk. Are most of you already after your journey? Most of you are maybe before your journey, the initiation part, I mean, like opening the hybrid engine part. So I, I really believe good. that this interview will reach many people in many different stages of the journey. So for sure, many of yeah. us can benefit from it. Cool. So I see in here before, before, after, before initiation, I see guys writing in the chat. Thank you. Um, some in the integration itself. Okay, great. So I'll try to say some words on, on preparation, maybe even on integration. So uh, one part of the preparation we already have done. This is things that I'm doing with people on the course of a few months. But right now with you, I just want to give some, you know, like uh, pranic uh, uh, candies <laughs> that we can enjoy <laughs> some, uh, some of them. So one of the biggest ones is understanding our whys. This is like to start the preparation. Some more things is to actually map the challenges. And mapping the challenges is something that I would recommend you to do with a person that is already guiding this process. A, a man or a woman that is already seeing this process for many years. I can tell you from my chair of a person that is already almost a decade guiding people more than a decade ago started himself that we've seen the challenges are repetitive. So I have already the privilege to map the metrics of this process. And I believe that other guides as well, to map the challenges that a person is going to meet after the process and to already prepare them on the preparation part, how we're going to meet some of those challenges and how we can already like, let's say loosen uh, some of the tight energy or more of the weight that would be there already in the preparation. So try to ask whatever guy that you're having a journey with, how we can prepare for the challenges you would meet after. Some challenges you would meet as well before uh, and after. And this is as for preparation. I'll tell you my perspective of it. We want to come to the process. Of course, not as a diet, not as a way to lose weight and not as a way to get rid of food. Um, and if we experience those, I would recommend to wait with the, with the initiation part. 
yeah, we might lose weight, we might be more healthy, but this is not a main reason that I would recommend to do this process from. I would actually work with you guys, and this is what I encourage you to work with yourself or with other guys on your relationship with food to be a loving relationship, to be peaceful relationship, that it's becoming a non-issue for you guys. Now, a big asterisk that we have over there is emotional eating and emotional consuming because it's not only through food. So in the preparation, I would give a lot of importance into emotional consuming and how we can actually look on a deeper level into emotional consuming and how to help her. Because sometimes people think emotional consuming is the problem. It's not a problem. It's just a symptom for something deeper. And this brings us into more topics in the preparation and in the integration, which are relationships. In both, in both like uh, parts, we would work on relationships in our lives, important ones, relationships with our beloved ones, maybe our partner, our family, children if we have, coworkers, friends, ourselves, creation, the place that we live in, activities we do in our day to day. And there are some more, but I gave you some already, <laughs> like a lot of, uh, let's say, like heavyweight topics. <laughs> and I want you to look at those and try to see, do I have any like energetic leaks in those? Let's say with my partner, all is beautiful. I'm in love with my children. I really, really trust creation, but my work is taking so much energy from me. And I cannot stand my neighborhood anymore. And let's say right now I'm doing a pranic journey. And it's like, let's say this is, a, this is the channel that I'm bringing prana through. And this amount of prana is entering, but then there is this big leak, <laughs> this huge of a big leak that goes out of me. So I, I put all of this pranic beautiful energy, but whew, everything goes out of here. So it's not about closing everything. It's not about being enlightened before we start our process, but it's closing those leaks, these energetic leaks. So let's say instead of this wide, it's maybe this wide or this wide to see that we actually can bring more life energy than what goes out of us. And try to take care in those different terms, in those different topics in our lives, meaningful relationships in our lives, in order to close those leaks or to narrow down those leaks. So we can be nourished from prana in a way that would be just more easy and not as energy consuming. A lot of it might be as well checking different stories that we have within ourselves. For many, many years, I go with some kind of an inner truth that it is really important for me to believe in myself. Every each one of us, so important to believe in ourselves. But I don't want to be too quick believing to myself. So I'll say it again, believe in myself, but not believe to myself. Because <laughs> I can tell stories to myself. Every each one of us, we have traumas. We have different stories from our lives. Am I good enough? Am I loved enough? Do people see me? Am I heard? And whatever, I'm shy. I don't know how to, I don't, all of those different stories. For me, none of them are true. None of them is true. It's just perceptions that we cut ourselves around. And I have those as well. I'm a human. I'm working on mine with love. I'm giving them compassion and patience and trying to slowly, slowly dissolve them. But this is like really catching ourselves 
believing in ourselves, but not to myself. And I hear myself tell myself a story and I say, oh, thank you for this beautiful story. <laughs> but I don't buy it as truth. And not fighting with myself, observing the story, my self-image, my self-doubts, how much I believe in myself, because all of those would come up in the pranic journey. And if we want to be nourished from prana, what happens is that the pranic energy surface up, brings up to the surface all the things that wants to be cleaned so we can be nourished from prana in a more easy way. So I want you to see those things that are coming up, not as a, oh no, <laughs> but more of a, oh yes, <laughs> thank you. We're on the right path. And we would meet those inner stories. Please don't judge yourself for those. This is where we are as humanity. Same lady, with a different dress. He's shy, she's angry. He's insecure, he's over secure. He's that, she's that. Same lady with a different dress. Doesn't matter. It's that lady that asks us to accept ourselves with love and to humbly and patiently do the work, not believing to ourselves, just believing in ourselves. and giving the time. So yeah, I wish to be with you hours more, maybe months more, <laughs> so I can really support you guys through this journey. But our time is about to finish for today. And we're about to enter now to a Q&A session. Yes. And I will tell you before, I don't remember if I'll, I'll try to remember say it in the end as well. If you guys are interested in any more thing, if you have any questions or if you want to contact in the website that the World Pranic Festival have done, you can go to my name over there and you'll have my email address and my Facebook. You can contact me through there. And right now it's Q&A time. I will tell you that right now, uh, I don't have any English group that I'm opening. I usually do groups in English and Hebrew. Right now I don't have one to offer you guys maybe in the future. Uh, right now I'm focusing uh, into a lot of social work in Israel and as well supporting some people in Israel right now in a group. And yeah, that's it for now. But let's start with the questions and take the time that we have left for those. Yes, Tal, thank you so much. And of course, people can find information about you on www.britarianworld.com. And now I have already a few Q uh, questions arrived for you. And also I want to really thank you to um, put attention into being patient, being patient and take life itself as a process because actually it's not really about the destination, but it's the journey itself, the journey of connecting with ourselves and learn to listen and to trust to the messages that we already have. Yeah. So, the first question, let me choose one. Okay, let's go practical. How your pranic living looks like right now? Beautiful. <laughs> but I would, I would give something that I, that I think maybe this was the question, so. As we know, in pranic living, there are the different levels. There are level three, level four, maybe underneath as well. I'm a breatharian level three. And actually, I call myself more of a pranic person. Because for me, this is the energy I'm nourished from. And how it looks in my day to day is that consumption wise, I would eat probably a day or two a week. Sometimes three if I want to go crazy. And with that, I have the freedom of choice. 
let's say one way of choosing one direction was like when I was with my family in a trip to Turkey almost two years ago a bit less it was eight days and seven out of these eight days I decided I want to eat with them <laughs> I haven't done that for a long time <laughs> so seven days out of eight I ate uh, and when I came back to Israel I wanted like some like dry days and cleaning days for me, um, just what I felt naturally. On the other hand, this is one way of freedom of choice. On the other hand, at the maximum that I've done, it was two and a half years of only drinking. So it's not that we need to eat every week. Another period I had was nine months of only drinking besides the two and a half years. So those were the two longer intervals I had with only drinking. And as for dry days, the maximum amount I've done was 10 dry days. 10 days with no food or drop of water. And just two weeks ago, I've done four dry days just because I like doing them sometimes. <laughs> anyway, I like doing dry days. It's like what people can call fasting, but I just don't see it fasting as fasting anymore because it's not that you need to be weak or with less energy. We just, we, we just keep our day to day as it is. And I just do a dry day, day that I don't eat nothing or drink nothing. Um, so sometimes besides doing a day or two, I like to do three, four, five, eight, nine, those I done multiple times in this decade, 10 were my maximum. And besides that, this is like consumption wise, besides that, taking care of my energy. Let's say like energy hygiene, <laughs> super important because, you know, if we come back from work, let's say to our home and we are all the time angry at our spouse and we are not patient to our ch children and we cannot stand the work that we wake up to every morning, but we want to go pranic. That wouldn't work as well. So I would recommend, again, let's take care of our relationships. Let's take care of the different things and activities we do in our life. Again, we don't have to have it solved in the most perfected way or be enlightened before, but just to see that we brought it into a level that is really good for our journey. You know, when I, when I do the journey for the month periods, of the longer path. So I give every each one of those things and steps and hows and what's and when to know why and, and how to know that it's really the right time. So right now we have just short time with us. So I would encourage you to try to do it as well with yourself. Um, but our energy hygiene is really important. Make sure that I am keeping myself on a high level of energy and, res and solving, resolving the different things that asks my attention in my life so I could keep myself on a higher level of energy. And by that, more easily be nourished from prana. Or maybe one last thing on that is something I call the joy compass. Take care of your joy. <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basic, take care of your joy compass because it would lead you to much more easier pranic living. Thank you. And I will... Uh... I will get into the other question that is probably related, which is how important is the spiritual part in your opinion? Um, it's like interconnected. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, I can tell you that I don't know if in this decade I've seen people that came to me that didn't do anything with a spiritual path before. Some more experienced, some less experienced but we have to have some kind of a connection. Otherwise, we'll probably just go to a, I don't know, detox process, <laughs> juice cleansing, some kind of a new diet, you know? If we don't connect as well the spiritual path with it. And when we connect the spiritual path with it, so I see more people are already as well, much higher percentage are the people that are coming to the pranic journey are people that are already have done a spiritual path. I don't want you guys to think uh, that you're not good enough. I mean, not generally. 
totally generally, I want you not to think that, but I say right now, laser focus to that as for the pranic journey. I've seen as well people coming to me and saying like, I'm not sure if I've done enough of journey. Usually when they said it, I seen that they have done already enough of journey. <laughs> But, you know, we always want to do more. We always want to make sure that we're doing the best things and in the best way. So sometimes we have this inner judge or this inner critic. And yeah, this is something that I talk as well in the journey. We didn't have the time to talk on that today. But bringing this compassion to those places are so important to our journey. And I believe that you're, if you're called to this journey and if you've done already a path in your spiritual path, it might be that you already have done enough in your spiritual path. And if you really feel that you haven't, deepen your path. Don't hurry nowhere. You don't have to do the panic journey today or in a month. You can do it in a year. You can do it in five years. You can do it in a decade. Do it in your timing. Uh, and with that, ask your guide. Because I can tell you that when people come to me, it's not that we start the journey. When they come to me, it depends because they do private processes like individual ones and group processes doesn't matter which one of them we have to go through like an observation meeting uh, meaning like when you go to a doctor and he does an observation tests on you to see if you are fit for this kind of therapy for example so same here i want to make sure that the people that are coming are coming from good reasons that would serve their soul and from a ripe place and this is what I check with them, even if we do it personally or on a group or with a group. So this is something that I would encourage you to check with your guide if they feel that you are ready. And if not, I'm just saying it, no insulting. I'm just saying it's my humble opinion from the decade of experience I have. And this is what I would recommend to do. And some people are coming to me after a year and one person came after seven years, you know, so it's OK. No worries. No rush. Take your time. Feel yourself and trust yourself as well and your path. Thank you so much. I'm trying to fix the video because I'm not visible anymore. Okay. But anyway, I can just go on with questions. Uh, if you can, okay, here I am. Okay. If you can answer shortly to this one, because I have. Uh, at least two more before we close and it's already almost one hour um, they want to know that you mentioned that you spent two years and a half just on uh, liquid and they want to know in the specific what the liquids are it's just juices just water or in your liquid diet you include also other kind of liquids yeah just dedicate no. dedicate short time to this one Cool. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a common question, of course. So yeah. I'll tell you what I see in the hybrid engine. The hybrid engine is hybrid. Is not as long as we are not breatharian level four. Breatharian level four could as well drink only water or even not water. Breatharian level three, let's be humble. And this is in my humble opinion. Let's be humble to the hybrid engine. And in the hybrid engine, we don't need to say food is bad. Juices are bad. Smoothies are the devil because they have fibers. <laughs> no, it's okay to drink them. And in those two and a half years, I drank juices, I drank smoothies, I drank cacao if I wanted or coconut water, or I drank water or teas. The thing is not calculating these things, but seeing that we first, A, not dependent on them. I had, I think almost half a year that I, drink, that I didn't drink one juice or just had teas, waters, like simple things. So it's playing with their freedom. And that's the thing over there. And when people are less experienced in this journey, so they're like, okay, but what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Enjoy. This is for me, the joy compass. Go with what you want to drink, but see as well that you're not pumping yourself with like, instead of eating a meal, you're drinking a shake. Instead of eating lunch, you're drinking a juice. Instead of drinking evening, you're blending your salad. <laughs> so drop that, enjoy your, go your joy compass in, in drinking. Uh, and as well, see that you're not just doing it every day that you need the machine, release the machine, have days and weeks without machine, but as well, enjoy it if you want and don't think it's the devil. <laughs> so for me, it's just a matter of freedom. 
Thank you I so somebody much. Somebody wrote in here, freedom of choice, like a play and a dance. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thanks. Exactly. And that's a new paradigm that we're going to. Exactly. Um, so let's go to the other question. A more spicy one. It's about um, your, uh, so let, let's combine two questions. So how your relationship changed throughout your pranic journey after the 21 days process and nowadays? And if uh, you are practicing celibacy or conscious sexual relationship? Mm -hmm. Super juicy and beautiful. <laughs> so uh, what happened with me is that after, and I'll be very honest with you guys, I'm an open person and I'll just bring it like that. I hope you can take it. <laughs> so uh, after my process, I didn't feel any more in alignment to ejaculate. I didn't feel anymore. I want to take out my seed energy, life energy outside as much as I had before as a man. And that happened to me naturally. And it's not that I haven't done it in this decade, I can do it, but rarely and consciously. And what it brought me is just exploring more of tantric realms and the possibility of having lovemaking longer and eventually with no target. Like you said before, Naida, not around the, the aim, the target as about journey as about the path, like putting the focus to the path. And I understood that, at least for me personally, I don't have any more any aim in lovemaking. I just love making the love. <laughs> I just love walking the path with my partner. And yeah, uh, and, and by that as well, it changed a lot of things in my relationships because you asked a question of how it changed my relationships. I felt that what my pranic journey have done to myself is it connected it more, it connected myself more to me and to creation. And by that, I became more sensitive to myself and to creation. So by that as well, I became more connected and sensitive to other people, to the animals, to the planet, to my service in the world. It brought me more patient, it brought me more love. So all of that could be as well shared with others. So I don't feel that we become uh, any better person than anyone else in the world. Let's please not fool ourselves around that. You do not become better than anyone else, but definitely we become a better versions of ourselves. Thank you so much. And I think we will close our sharing with this last question also, because I want to ask that our technician, if they can, uh, uh, show the location and, and like say goodbye to you from the venue of the festival yeah. rather than from this beautiful room where I'm staying. Thank yeah. you. Thank you again. Such a pleasure to listen to your sharing. And yeah. I really look forward to meet you in person, most probably at the next Pranic World Festival here in Italy. Amen. <laughs> and now, yeah, if Fabio can show to all of us that would be amazing. Oh, wow. I see the video is there. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> wow. So exciting to see you. <laughs> Yay. Hey, beautiful souls. <laughs> wow. Nicholas, I love you, brother. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much, brother. Wow, that my, made my heart so happy. <laughs> really hoping to be with you guys there next time. And thank you, Naida. Thank you to the translators. Yeah. Thank you, Nicolas and Rafaela and all the crew, all the amazing sacred work that you do to all of us, all the volunteers. And thank you to the Pranic Lifestyle and creation that allows these beautiful lifestyles to emerge in this world and deepen in this world. Much love, guys. Thank you, Tal. And see you in one hour for the next conference. Bye-bye. Cool. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>